Welcome. The title of my message today, my teaching, is The Separation of the Wicked. Um, welcome to Prophecy Countdown. I'm Pastor Ken, and we provide two updates each week, one on a Wednesday at 11 a.m., and the other one premieres on Sunday at 1 p.m. Now, our updates are always prophecy-related. We love answering questions that you may have, and you can ask your questions by sending us an email to prophecycountdownpodcast at gmail.com. That's prophecycountdownpodcast at gmail.com. Um, I personally answer every single email that comes in, and that's exactly how some of these, uh, these topics get aired on our channel, Prophecy Countdown. So again, my message today is called The Separation of the Wicked, and uh, it's from Matthew chapter 13. Uh, Jesus has begun to, to teach in parables, beginning in Matthew 13, and this is going to be the primary way that Jesus will, will teach. Now, he told his disciples that the, the reason that he uses parables is this. He says, because it has been given to you, and that's to us as well, it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. So these are, these are mysteries. Now, remember, a mystery is not something that is unknown. It's, it's, it's a mystery is something that's, that can be revealed, and Jesus is revealing the mysteries. So today we'll be looking at chapter 13, verses 47 through 50. Um, it's actually known as the parable of the dragnet. And let me read it to you. Jesus says, beginning in verse 47, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and gathered some of every kind, which when it was full, they drew it to shore. They sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but threw the bad away. And so it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come forth, separate the wicked from among the just, and cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Now, this is a parable that's very similar to a parable we read just a little while ago, the parable of the wheat and the tares. It communicates what happens at the end of the age. The angels of God will be dispatched to separate uh, the good from the bad, the wheat from the chaff, the righteous from the wicked. Uh, now, in the coming kingdom of heaven, we have both the righteous and the, and the wicked. That's what we have right now. In both this parable as well as the, and the other parable, notice that it's the wicked, uh, again, represented by the tares and the bad fish and the sea creatures, that are so intentionally gathered up, rounded up, and separated for punishment. This separation is important as ultimately the wicked will be separated from the just. The devil will be bound and will be free from sin, from deception, and from deceit. You know, the prophets of the Old Testament taught that when the Messiah comes, when the Messiah would come, he would deliver and rescue his people Israel. In Isaiah chapter 9, for example, um, it refers to the Messiah. We, we know this passage, especially around the Christmas season. It says that he will be wonderful, counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, the prince of peace. Now, the prophet Isaiah also taught that the Messiah would extend his kingdom to both the Jews and the Gentiles. The prophets also spoke of the day of the Lord. Prophets Zechariah, Daniel, Malachi, Ezekiel, Isaiah all speak of a time of judgment, a time when God moves and acts and ultimately establishes his rule over all the earth. Now, while these parables are stories using figurative and metaphorical, metaphorical language, we don't have to struggle hard trying to figure out who is who and what is what. We have very, very clear teachings in the Bible that tells us how to interpret these messages. First of all, both the parable of the wheat and the tares, as well as this parable of the, of the dragnet, uh, there is a separation, a distinction between the good and the bad, between the righteous and the wicked. You know, often when we read these terms, many assume that the righteous refers to those people who do lots of good deeds and that the wicked refers to anyone but themselves, actually, the people that do the wicked deeds. Wicked, wicked deeds. Uh, but this is really not what the Bible teaches. Jesus spoke very clearly that no one 
uh, no one was capable of keeping the law. No one was capable of in themselves becoming righteous. Um, however, he also taught that the wicked, those that uh, were sinners, could be justified. They could be forgiven and they could be accepted in the kingdom of God. You know, Jesus forgave the sins of the woman that was caught in adultery. Uh, Zacchaeus was a tax collector. He was known for his dishonest practices, but Zacchaeus repented. And Jesus declared after Zacchaeus re repented that salvation had come to his house. The criminal on the cross, the thief on the cross next to Jesus, uh, just asked Jesus to remember him when he went into the kingdom. And Jesus promised him that that day he would be with him in paradise. So what's the difference? Well, if you've been listening, the difference is Jesus. The apostle Paul speaks of this in nearly all of his, his, his epistles. Here's just one example in Romans chapter 3, verses 21 through 24. Paul says, But now the righteousness of God, apart from the law, is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe. Let me repeat that last line. Faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe. For there's no difference. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. You know, Paul makes it very clear that it's faith in Jesus that makes all the difference. That's the difference. That's the difference that separates the wheat from the tares, the righteous from the wicked. Now, there's a warning in these parables, too, and, and I need to spend some time on the warning, as it's really a very important lesson to, to those of us, to the church. You know, it's sometimes difficult to see the difference, and that is the warning. The, the appearances can easily fool you. Now, what Jesus is telling us in this parable is that on this side of glory, this side of the earthly, the temporal, um, this side of the kingdom of heaven, the fields, the seas, and our churches have both believers as well as non-believers. Jesus declares that we will be either wheat or tares. We will either be judged to be righteous or wicked. Uh, just as the dragnet gathers up whatever is there, both the good and the bad, they don't get sorted out until afterwards after the judgment after in the parable after the work, workers separated the fish now in the same way this ever living gospel that saves us um, and is broadcast to the entire world our you know the the gospel is broadcast to all of our churches to our homes our our christian concerts our events even the billy graham crusades uh, when billy graham was was uh, was doing crusades all around the world everybody came both those that were righteous as well as the wicked. And those that left, some were righteous and some were wicked. Some were justified and some were not. They're saint and sinner, good and bad. Often, uh, they look alike. You, you can't tell them apart. However, the Bible says that those that receive Jesus, receive Jesus, those become sons of God. They become sons, children of God, and, and they become the righteous. This is what it says in, in, um, in the Gospel of John. It said, those that receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. And then John goes on to explain, children that are born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but they're born of God. You know, Jesus teaches that all those that say Christian, or all those that say Jesus, are not necessarily believers nor are they necessarily included in those that are righteous. Only those individuals, and that includes our religious leaders, our priests, our pastors, as well as some of our church's entire denominations, that confess who Jesus truly is are included in those that are righteous. And actually, unfortunately, there are many that are there to deceive us. There are many of those that are, that are the false prophets. There are many of those that are, are telling lies. Jesus said that there would be many that would come in his name, claiming to represent him, and deceive many people. In Matthew chapter 7, uh, Jesus warns to watch out for those false prophets who will claim to be one of his sheep but are actually wolves in sheep's clothing. Deceivers, these are, who lead others astray away from who Jesus truly is. 
Now, while it's impossible for us to see the difference sometimes between the righteous and the wicked, the good and the bad, the saints and the sinner, Jesus has no such problem. Obviously, the angels don't as well because they are the ones that are sent out to separate the righteous from the wicked. And by the way, this teaching in both of these parables about the angels coming at the end of the age and gathering the wicked uh, that are being sent out, this is not allegory. This is not metaphor. Jesus is telling us exactly what will happen at the end of the age. The Bible tells us that the angels are ministering spirits. They minister to us, but they're also dispatched by God, and they are extremely powerful. They will accomplish his will. You know, remember the account of Sodom and Gomorrah back in Genesis 19. The two angels were sent to Lot and to the city of, God, uh, of Sodom, and they rescued Lot and his family before God rained down fire and brimstone onto the sinful city. If you remember the story of the first Passover in Egypt, the angel of death was sent to strike the firstborn in all the Egyptian households. The difference was that the doors of the people of Israel had been sprinkled by the blood of the lamb, and they passed over. That's where we get the name Passover. One of the most amazing feats uh, done by angels um, is when the Assyrian king Sennacherib threatened Jerusalem. And an angel of the Lord went out and struck down 185,000 Assyrian soldiers in just one evening. The Bible teaches that behind the human activity of the wicked, the one that sows deceptions is actually the devil. We know him as Satan. Satan creates counterfeits, counterfeit churches, counterfeit teachers, counterfeit messiahs, counterfeit, counterfeit prophets, all in an attempt to undermine the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, in these parables, the warning is clear. And the warning is stay close to Jesus. Lean on him. Jesus says the thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. But then Jesus goes on, he says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the abundance. You know, uh, back to the mention of the angels in this passage this, that this, that's described in the dragnet, Jesus uses this vivid imagery of angels being dispatched to gather the people at the end of the age, both in the parable of the wheat and the tares and this parable of the dragnet. And then later also, in the parable of the sheep and the goats, Jesus describes very, very clearly that it's his angels that will be dispatched to separate the wicked from the just. You know, in the Olivet Discourse, when the apostles came to Jesus and they asked him clearly, tell us about when these things will happen, uh, what will be the sign of your coming in the end of the age, Jesus tells us very clearly, and he's not using a parable here. Jesus says this in Matthew 24, beginning in verse 29. He says, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then all the peoples of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels, there it is again, with a loud trumpet call. And they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of the heavens to the other. You know, presently, Jesus is sowing. He's sowing seed, sowing the word of God so that all men and women, the Jews and the Gentiles, slave and free, rich and poor, all have the opportunity to hear the gospel. Those that receive the word of God for the word of God, for what it is, and embrace Jesus Christ as the Messiah and their Lord, they'll be saved. Jesus will return for his church. The Bible says that after Jesus returns for his church, there is a period of seven years called the time of Jacob's trial. It's a very difficult time. It's a horrible time of judgment. At the same time, it's also an opportunity to repent. One last opportunity to turn from our wicked ways and come to Jesus. Now, at the end of that age, Jesus will return. The Bible says that his feet will touch down on the Mount of Olives. And with the wicked removed, will all enter into a thousand year period which is called the millennial reign of Christ, as Christ reigns as King of kings and Lord of lords. You, you don't want to miss it, my friends. Jesus is coming soon. These parables are for us to be able to understand some of the mysteries of the kingdom of God. And one of those mysteries 
is that Jesus is coming again soon. Amen? Let me pray. Father God, we want to thank you, Lord, for allowing us to share the gospel with so many people on video and on audio. We pray, Lord, for the people in Israel as well as those Palestinians in Gaza as we know that there are enemies of Israel that are determined to eradicate the Jewish people. We thank you, Lord, for giving us every opportunity to share this message of your soon coming for your church. We know, Lord, that you have a plan, and we pray that all, all may come to faith in your son, Jesus Christ, so that their sins may be forgiven. Bless the listening audience, Lord, and give them peace in Jesus' name. Nearly every day, it's common to see, read, or hear something about the end of the world, the apocalypse, or end times. Author and pastor Kenneth Baer's The Apocalypse and Coming Kingdom zooms in and breaks down biblical prophecy as it relates to Jesus' imminent return and the coming seven-year period, including the Great Tribulation. Available in both paperback and Kindle versions. Get your copy on Amazon or at Barnes & Noble and select Christian bookstores. The title again is The Apocalypse and Coming Kingdom. You can also find it listed by author Kenneth Baer. Get your copy today. Thank you for joining us on Prophecy Countdown with Pastor Ken Baer. Don't leave without first sharing the latest episode with your friends. Be sure to join us again for the latest updates on Prophecy Countdown.